I want to bring in Javier Elaje, General Counsel for the Human Rights Foundation. Javier, thank you for being with me. Thank you, Jose, for inviting me. This crisis is not going to get any better because, as Bill was talking about, even when the weather goes uh, south, people are willing to leave if their only option is staying and dying. Correct. What is going on? So in, in Cuba, the situation... No, no, let's talk about the, the migrant situation okay. in Europe first. Okay. So what is happening here? Why are so many people leaving? Why the increase in number of refugees leaving Syria and other countries? Uh, because of the, of the problem that, that started a, a few years ago with Bashar al-Assad uh, trying to prevent uh, his country from raising, like, the, the, the liberal forces in the country from, from, from getting democracy by repressing them brutally, the same way that, that Muammar Gaddafi did years, be, years before that, and that the UN eventually, I mean, through, through the UN Security Council, in application of the, of the doctrine of the responsibility to protect, they acted in Libya. And, and they were supposed to act to prevent mass atrocities, to prevent genocide, crimes against humanity. They were supposed to act in Syria, yet uh, because of the veto power of, of China and Russia, uh, the UN uh, stood in the sideline and NATO did not do anything. And as a result, the problem only got worse. And now what you see is people that have been uh, undergoing a civil war for the past day. Uh, four or five years with hundreds of thousands of dead people, a, a president that, that is willing to go as far as, 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 as murdering a, an entire town of, of people that is taken over by the opposition, by the, by the rebels in this case, uh, including uh, gassing their children by the hundreds. So that's, that's one of the reasons why you see so many people fleeing that area. And I want to talk to you now about something much closer to home. And we're talking about what's going on in Cuba today. Since December, as you know, the United States and Cuba have uh, reestablished diplomatic relations, first time since 1961. What is going on in Cuba internally right now? Repression has increased, and you can see it by the numbers. Uh, and from July to August, uh, the number of detainees, as you know, in Cuba, they, they will detain you arbitrarily for no reason, just for voicing opposition to the government. They'll, de they'll detain you for one to three days, and they'll let you go. That has happened in the number of... Uh, 872 in the month of August. That, that's 300 more people than in the month of July. Why are they being detained? Uh, there are a number of crimes in the in the in the Cuban judicial system, which is a, the, the, the judicial system of a totalitarian state. This is important to, to to stress. The Cuban Constitution, Article 62 of the Cuban Constitution, establishes that no rights that are recognized formally in the Constitution are supposed to be exercised against the decision of the Cuban people to build socialism and communism. What does that mean? So, so that, that means that. The, the rights that are uh, formally enshrined in the Constitution are actually canceled by the Constitution itself. So there is no right in Cuba for any citizen to be against the government, to criticize the government so at all. So now there is, uh, among the, the, the political prisoners, uh, there is a young man known as El Sexto. He is an artist and he is on a hunger strike. And uh, what is happening there? Danilo Maldonado, also known as El Sexto, is a, is a prisoner of conscience. He is a Cuban artist, best known for his, for his graffiti art. He tried to put together on Christmas Day a performance consisting of painting two little pigs with the words Fidel and Raul. He got that far. He got to paint them at his house. And as, who, as soon as he was leaving his house, he wanted to let them go at the Parque Central in Cuba. As part of an art As part of an art performance, a performance piece. That's very common in modern art, as any, uh, as any person would know. And they, they tried, he tried to release these pigs in the Central Park, which is a populated area, unlike where the place where tourists are taken, which is the Plaza de la Revolución. Right to see the nice Che Guevara portrait there, uh, that's, that's a military place. So he happened? wanted to release them in, in the public and have the public, have the people that pick the pigs, take them and, and cook them. Uh, however, as soon as he was leaving his house, he was arrested by the political police in Cuba and has been in jail for nine months He's on now. a hunger strike. He's on a hunger strike. He was, he, he's, he's been mostly under solitary confinement and 25 days ago, he started a hunger strike. Uh, asking for his release and refusing to use, and because he refused to use uh, uh, the prisoner's clothes. It's the same reason why Orlando Zapata, who died of a hunger strike in February 2010, uh, went another, on the hunger strike. another political prisoner. Another political prisoner. In the case of Orlando Zapata, who was a political prisoner from the Cuban Black Spring in 2003. Uh, and that's what's happening with El Sexto. Uh, we're fearing for his life. Unfortunately, there isn't enough of, of public awareness around the world, in the free world. It would go a long way if, for example, President Obama could mention the name of a sex as he has mentioned other political prisoners like Leopoldo Lopez in Venezuela, for example. If he could just 
ask Raúl Castro to release El Sexto, it would go a long way. It would probably go as far as saving his life. Javier Elaje, thank you very much for being with me. His name, he is known as El Sexto, and he is on a hunger strike, and he is very close to death. Thank you very much for being with me.